First reading today comes from Psalm chapter 80, verse 1 through 7, and you can follow the words right up on the screen. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. O Lord, God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us the scorn of our neighbors. Our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Sorry, it's a big book. Our next reading comes from Luke chapter 1. Verse 26 to 38, and again, you can follow along on the screen. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings. Favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. And you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, 
the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. May God bless the reading and the hearing of the word. to make an entrance but <laughs> It's always trouble.
So, Cindy, go ahead. Okay. What's going on here? You guys have a pageant to present ASAP. <laughs> Our super disciple Jason here thinks he can play the role of the innkeeper. With no training, I might add. And Ted basically told me to fly up a tree. Guys, we don't have time for this bickering. Besides, the programs have already been printed and everyone knows their lines. This production is ready for the stage. <laughs> the pageant again? Well, hello to you too, and no, I'm managing the production. Phew. What'd you say? I said, achoo, I must have, be allergic to something. Maybe you're allergic to all that chocolate on your face. Why is it every Christmas season your face looks like Willy Wonka's chocolate factory? <laughs> well, I had the grandchildren over for cookie making the other day, and they watched the movie, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Is that the movie with Jim Carrey, or is Tom Duty playing that role again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really funny, guys. Why are you so early, Jason? Looking for your lost cape again? Uh, no. Actually, I was practicing for the role of the innkeeper. But everyone thinks I should stay in the role of Joseph. I'm kind of sick of being the husband all the time. Yeah, you and me both. <gasps> <laughs> Sorry, Hans. <laughs> Sorry, I'm really, I was just kidding. Love you, Daddy. <laughs> okay, guys, okay. But what's going on here? Yeah, and who's on first? And what's on second? Guys, this is really getting out of hand. Well, it has been agreed that I should stay on as innkeeper. I am the perfect host. But I thought I could just change it up a little bit. Should I baptize this to the Holy Family upon their arrival? They can feel real welcome. Listen, Martha Stewart, this is my role. <laughs> so why don't you take your little red cape and... Okay, okay, I'm ready. Who's she? Yeah, and why she got that microphone there in her face? You all know Tanya. She will be this year's narrator. Oh, oh hi, hi, Tanya. Hi, guys. It certainly is an honor to meet the Super Disciples in person. Oh, hey, I've never heard you guys at a loss for words. Nor us. Nor uh, you of you. Yeah. Jerry, I really don't think that was a compliment. Oops. <laughs> hey, we're losing sight of my little problem here. What? You're flying? And all the speeding tickets for the way you fly? No, my character in the lot. I didn't know your character was in question. Not like that. Sometimes I swear those high altitudes give you the strangest ideas. I mean, my character in the script. Oh, tell me it's not the role of Mary. You know, in the days of Shakespeare, men played the female roles because women weren't allowed on the stage. All you need is a shave and... No, 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 no. What error were you going? <clears throat> Not as far back as Shakespeare, I was old. No, I want to play the Yankee, but Tim will not relinquish the role or the costume. For the last time, Jason, get over it. Now fly backstage and get on your Joseph costume. Tim, go to the stables, and you three kings go get robed and crowned. Wow, she's bossy. I heard that. Oops. I seem to be saying that a lot today. You know, I think it'd really be a miracle if we could pull off this miracle. Finally, something that you've said that I can agree with. Musicians, take it away.
morning and welcome to our special production of The Christmas Story. This is a story like no other. It is the story of a baby, not just any baby, but the baby Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us begin at the beginning. In a faraway country on the other side of the world over 2,000 years ago, a young woman by the name of Mary prepares herself for the journey of a lifetime. Beginning her adventure in Nazareth, Mary was betrothed to Joseph, a local carpenter. Yes, Joseph, a hard-working and caring man. But one day before we were married, an angel of the Lord to me appeared and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Well, Mary had no idea what the angel was talking about, and she was quite terrified to see an angel before her. But then the angel said, Don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, for you shall become with child and give birth to a son, and you will name the baby Jesus. The child will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. But how will this happen? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left Mary, but Mary never forgot what the angel said. Please join us as we sing one verse of Angels We Have Heard on High. Quite the dilemma. First, I was engaged to be married to a beautiful woman, and then found out that she was expecting a child before our wedding day. This could have been scandalous and even deadly. So, to save Mary from harm, I decided to call off the wedding quietly. Well, one night after Joseph decided to take this action, he had a dream where an angel from God came to him, and the angel said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Upon hearing this, I knew I couldn't divorce Mary, for God was performing a miracle through her. So Joseph took her into his home to keep her safe. Then there was... Then all there was to do was to wait for the Son of God to be born. Please join us in singing, O Little Town of Bethlehem. with Joseph, a decree was sent out to everyone in, in Israel that all must return to the town of their ancestors so that they could be counted and taxed. Joseph was a descendant of David. King David, and King David was from this town, the town of Bethlehem. 
So Joseph had come all the way to Bethlehem from Nazareth. Hey, Kim, you're doing great. Need any help? No thanks, Jerry, but I appreciate the kind gesture. Are you sure? Very. Come on, guys. This baby needs a place to be born now. Okay, where we are. Oh, yes. Oh, so Mary and Joseph searched for a place to sleep. For Mary was weary. Hello, I am Joseph, and this is Mary. We need a place to stay for the night, please. Sorry, but there's no room in the inn. Oh, but please, sir. You see, we have walked over 70 miles to get here, and Mary, as you can see, is very tired. Sorry, I, I really can't help you. The place is packed with visitors from all out of town. There's just no place to put you or your wife. But please, sir, see, Mary is about to have a baby. It could even happen tonight. We just need some sort of shelter, anywhere. Well, I do see a problem. Since it's obvious that you're in need, you know, there's a stable out back. It's not much, but it'll keep you away from the wind and the night air, and it will provide you with some privacy. We'll take it. Thank you. You have been most kind. God bless you. Yes, the world was about to be blessed by God that evening in a very unique way. Now, while Mary mm -hmm. and Joseph were in the stable that night, the baby Jesus, the Son of God, was born, and Jesus Mary wrapped him head. in swaddling clothes. Put your arms up in the air. Put this over your head.
shepherds were out in the fields watching over their flocks that night. And all of a sudden, an angel from God appeared, and the shepherds were terrified. They hit the ground, but the angel said, Don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace toward men. The angels left and the shepherds said, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened that the Lord has told us about. And so they went, and they found the stable and the manger and the baby, just like God had told them. And afterward, they went into the town of Bethlehem, rejoicing and telling anyone who would listen exactly what had happened. And they praised and glorified God for all that they had been told and all that they had seen. or the three wise men, followed the star in the east. I would still refer to us as the three kings. The word wise is still under debate with this crew. Well, I would like to think of myself as wise. Well, you can think all you want, but there are things I know, and wise ain't part of your equation. Don't say any more, not a word. Wow, she's just like Cindy. <laughs> Oops. Okay, now the three kings follow the star that had shone, shone down before them to reveal a lowly stable in Bethlehem where the only holy child was born. While bringing gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, the kings fell onto their knees in front of the little baby praising and thanking God for his gift of peace and finding the true king of kings. Please join us for our final carol, Joy to the World. <laughs> <laughs> 